feel like the offseason flew by? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. We're here now uh, getting ready to go for fall camp. So, yeah. Have you ever had to wait like a whole year, year plus to, to play? No, I've, ne I've never done that. Last year was my first time doing it. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy learning from Joe and uh, this whole team, just, you know, how to be a leader. And uh, it was good for me to sit. Was it difficult to week to week to do that? No, not at all. I mean, when you got a guy like Joe in front of you, I feel like, you know, it's a great guy to learn from. You know, soak up as much as you can soak up. And, you know, I felt like I did that last year. You know, Coach was saying, Halsley uh, was saying, that you got the physical part down, but this year during the off season, it was about maybe for you learning the in intricacies of the offense and, and why they do certain things and call certain plays at certain times, right? Did you, did you progress in that area, you think? Yes, sir. I, I think that's definitely somewhere I progressed. Um, you know, why we do certain things, why we motion, um, you know, why our tempo is important, uh, things like that. So I think that's definitely somewhere I grew um, in this past off season. What's it like, uh, you know, going from being a, a freshman here and learning from Joe and now kind of right away stepping into that leadership role yourself? Well, yeah, I think that was always my vision. Um, you know, come in early, uh, learn from a guy like Joe, learn from Hendo when, you know, he was still here during that bro prep. and. Uh, yeah, man, I think it was great for me, and um, it's really, you know, what I envisioned. Um, you know, sit the first year, soak up as much I, as I can soak up, and, uh, you know, year two was, was go time for me. What do you think you've taken the most from them that you've been able to use now? I've taken so, so much things from, from Joe and Hendon, uh, you know, just how to be a pro, how to, you know, show up and, you know, uh, you know the way you show up in the building. Um, I think I, I, I took, you know, a couple gems from those two, and, uh yeah, man, just being a leader, um, leading this guy, leading these guys ain't easy. So, you know, learning how to lead, and um, yeah, I think that's definitely somewhere I, I learned that. Coach, really praise your humbleness, you know, especially after that Citrus Bowl. How have you really taken this off season to get in the mindset going into year two? Yeah, like I said, it, it, year two is something you know I've, I've envisioned since you know coming here. Uh, year two is going to be my year, and you know, go time for me, and you know, I'm ready. Nico, they've got you listed at 215 now. Is that, is that pretty accurate? How yeah, pretty accurate. Yeah, um, you know, I'm around that range, 213, 214. Uh, still trying to be more consistent with, you know, getting up to 220. Um, but yeah, that's somewhere I'm at right now. Has that been a hard process to put on and maintain? Yeah, I'd say for me, it definitely, um, I burned a lot of calories easy um, when I first got here. You know, I, I was pretty light my senior year. So uh, being able to put on, you know, as much weight as I can this this off season, um, you know, I've gotten great help with the, you know, our nutrition staff, our strength program. So yeah, they've been helping me out pretty. pretty the well. nutrition plans main. Yeah, more meals. Yeah, 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 more meals. Um, showing up to breakfast, more breakfast for me. Uh, I think breakfast meals are, you know, the hardest for me. Um, but yeah, getting getting breakfast in for me, and you know, all four meals throughout the day. What's been your breakfast go-to now? You develop one. Breakfast, uh, yeah, I've been I've been sticking with the French toast, eggs, and you know sausage. Uh, that's pretty much what I've been sticking with. Nico, what do you think your receiver so far, and and what does Chris bring to the table with all the different things that he can do on the field? Yeah, um, Chris brings a lot. You know, him coming from Tulane. Uh, you know, I think his uh, his vertical threat is what I've seen um, show out most during this uh, last spring. And uh, yeah, I think along with our, you know, all of our series, I feel like we got a great mesh with with all them. And, you know, I can't wait to work with them fall camp. What the process in terms of grasping the offense? I mean, obviously watching film, is it somebody in particular? You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of thing you went through? I'd say last year it was, it was pretty much Joe. Um, any question I had, I went to Joe with it. Uh, this year, I think, you know, more with the, you know, the, the little staff on the side, uh, Coach KZ, Coach Mitch, um, D's have been helping me out. And then along with my trainers coming from Cali, uh, I brought, you know, my trainer for 3D QB, Taylor Kelly, to come out here and help me out. So, yeah, I, um, got a great support system around me over here. So right now you're grasping this offense compared to, like, when you played in the game against Iowa, how different would it be right now? I think I got more of, you know, a great feel for the offense. I feel like out there, uh, bowl game, you know, a lot of it was, was playing in instincts. I feel like I got a better feel for it now going into uh, game weeks. Nico, obviously your legs are part of the component that make you good, right? Yes, sir. How do you have to manage yourself knowing you know, you've got to keep you upright for team success? So, I mean, yeah. like, how do you know? Like, have you talked with Joey about like when and when not to slide, that type of thing? Yeah, well, of course, I'm, I'm always trying to protect myself. I'm not a guy that wants to run or, you know, I love to throw the ball. So, you know, really running when I have to and, you know, protecting myself is something we emphasize this, you know, this past year. You work with a, with a quarterback coach out in California that, you know, Bryce Young works with. And I know part of Bryce's game is the ability to 
to extend plays and keep his eyes down the field. It feels like that's something you've kind of excelled at coming up. Um, is that something you're taught, or is that just instinctual? I think I think it really is instinctual, man. Um, you know, you, practice reps you can only do so much. You got a red jersey on, and it's hard to emulate what it's going to be like in a game. So, I think when you get in a game, and um, I think instincts come into play. Uh, a lot of playmaking, you know, just. A clock in your brain goes off on when you need to make those type of plays. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've learned a lot from Bryce, um, you know, watching him, watching him up close and uh, his Bama days and, uh, you know, now at, at Carolina. So I've been always been a big fan of Bryce. Nico, being, being, uh, being Tennessee's quarterback isn't just like playing on Saturdays. I mean, people recognize you. There's, there's, there's that part of it. How have you adjusted to that over the last year, that public part of it? Yeah, I think I've always – Handled it well. Um, you know, I try and stay around family as much as I can. Uh, I do enjoy, you know, when I go out to eat and um, some fans walk up, you know, I always stop by and take a picture. But I think that's what just comes with playing quarterback at the University of Tennessee. Is that ever a burden, though? Say it again? Is that ever a burden, though? No, I wouldn't say it's a burden. Uh, I feel like, you know, I've come from humble beginnings. I know what it's like to, you know, have somebody you look up to and want to get a picture with him. So it's, not, it's never a burden. I know you said earlier you envisioned yourself learning under somebody. Um, but I, I'm curious, too, are there times when you're not playing and you're so used to playing, how many times do you last season get frustrated that you know, I'd love to be out there? I mean, I think, I think that always comes with just your competitive spirit. But, uh, you know, I never, never, like, I was never pressured to feel like, damn, I want to go play. It was kind of like Joe's going to handle this. I know he's got his, got this team on his back. And, you know, I was okay with that. How, how much do you think that that mindset helped you sort of maybe win over your teammates? They saw how you came in, was humble, you know, you're running the scout team four and 12 practices. How, how much do you think that helped you going into this role now where yeah. they, they've seen sort of your, your kind of journey and path you've taken? I think it's helped me. I hope so. Sure. Uh, I think I have a great relationship with all my teammates. And, uh, yeah, we built, you know, a great br a bond with, you know, all of us here. So, uh, yeah, I think I, think I want to say it's helped me, yeah. You've talked a lot about how your family instilled humility into you. Was there ever a time, like when you were younger, so you can think of when you when you weren't humble, or they had to correct you in that way? I think uh, when the other team starts talking smack, I'll probably get a little, you know, a little out of character. But I think that that's about it. Yeah, no, I think uh, my dad and mom always kept me in check. Both of them? Is it one? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it takes a village. So yeah, both of them, both of them, even my brothers and sisters. So. The EA game, what team did you make for Dynasty? First play you ran, and what player were you? Dynasty, shoot. I haven't even loaded up Dynasty yet. I've been on the road to the, the college football playoffs. I've been playing a couple seasons of those. Got a, got a couple natties under my belt. But I think Dynasty, I might I might go with, when I do make one, I might be Simp. I don't know, D Simp, he, begin, he got a little wiggle out the backfield. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't loaded up Dynasty yet. Since we're on that topic, uh, Got your name pronunciation slightly wrong. Yeah. You're trying to make some calls to EA. Or? Yeah. Oh uh, shoot, man. I, I I feel like they've watched a couple game copies. I, I think they. I mean, shoot, our announcers kind of messed it up too. So, I mean, I can't blame them. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully get it right after. You know, I will play a couple games this year. Nick, are you hearing the the hype around this season? Are you hearing the noise going into it, or have you already started just kind of block that out? What, what's your process when it comes to the hype from the media heading into the season? Yeah, I think. Be where your feet are, man. I think, um, you know, I'm focused on fall camp, going into fall camp, and, you know, what we have to do to better our team and, you know, try and reach our goals that we have for this season. You're talking about the talking smack, so your parents are telling you don't talk smack back? Is that the whole thing? Basically? Uh, Kind of don't let the other guy get under your skin. You know, um, guys talk a lot, and, you know, I learned that at a young age to kind of channel it and, you know, keep it, keep it to yourself. So you don't talk back? I, I try not to. I may, I may, I may slip something out here and there, but I try not to. Yeah. Does, it make, does it make it easier when you've got older brothers that are probably, you know, picked on little brother at some point along the way? Yeah, well, I was I was younger. I was probably like eight or nine playing up with my brother, my older brother. And he was like, they're 12 you. So I was playing up, and I think when I was younger, I got a good gist of of the, the, the smack talking when I was a little younger. And then as I got older, I grew into my own and was able to, you know, take care of myself. You're a pretty chill guy. Do you, like, do you play angry? Do you ever get angry when you play? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I get angry. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think I get angry when I play. Would you be a worse player if you played angry? Would you? Would uh, I would probably care less about my body if I played angry. But I think 
staying, you know, me, true to myself, has, has helped me so far. So. so if you're running way too much, you, we know you're mad. Is that <laughs> yeah, yeah, shoot. You might, yeah, I might be a little mad if I'm running too much, yeah. And not sliding. And not sliding, yeah. I've got to protect myself. So. Well, how, you talk about the college football game. What, what else do you do to decompress? I mean, if you just want to, like, get away? Yeah, relax. um, true. Uh, me and my family went to the lake and, you know, we rode some jet skis and got a, got a little boat. And, yeah, I think just family time for me is really all I need. Like, in... Here, around here? Yeah, here. Yeah, man. Uh, my dad and mom have done a great job of, you know, trying to make it out here as much as they can. Um, if my brothers or little sisters don't have any games out there in Cali, they'll come. So, yeah, I've got a great support system. Have you talked to Joe or Jalen Wright or anybody else that's kind of going through that NFL process this summer? Uh, really, Joe is the only one I've been talking to. Um, still, like, keeping contact with, you know, guys like Kamal, um, Jalen Wright, but I think Joe's been my biggest mentor and, you know, somebody I can always go to. Your quarterback coach, what's his name? Taylor Kelly. Him? Taylor Kelly, uh, Adam Dato, John Beck. There's a, there's a group of guys that I train with. So. How do you match? Because the NFL quarterbacks do the same thing, right? They have their own QBs and they have their quarterback. How do you, do you ever have coaches here and them confer with each other? Kind yeah, of yeah, for sure. Uh, like yeah, my trainer was out here with, you know, Coach Joey and them. And, you know, they talked uh, about stuff I need to work on. And um, my trainer kind of implements what you know I have to work on in his drill so yep. Coach Hosley said after the Citrus Bowl that you felt that you had so much that you left on the field immediately start attacking the playbook where does that hunger for you come from I think watching watching back on that bowl game again um, you know a couple shots I missed uh, you know just not seeing the field right as I should have been um, and I think that's going to help me uh, you know in this future games with experience so I, I think I definitely needed that bowl game um, and yeah, I think that's where it comes from, just watching that bowl game over and seeing what I missed. What, when did that click? Is it the first time you watched it? Or when, did, when was the first time you watched it after? Uh, first time I, I watched it the, the next day. Um, the full TV copy, I watched it. And then, uh, yeah, there's just some, some stuff I missed. Even so. on the TV copy where you like felt like you, you missed some things? I mean, there, there were still completions. I think there just could have been bigger completions uh, that I missed. So yeah, uh, just watching back on the TV copy, yeah. The team, you know, doing I don't remember how they did in the bowl game. I think they did. I think they just called me Nico the whole time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So. What about the idea of just being one word, just Nico? Shoot. Um, everybody else gets their last name called some. I hope they get my last name right. Uh, you know, at one point. Um, but I, I'm cool with Nico too. But. This, this season's kind of got a weird schedule because you have a neutral site game and then two road games before your first like SEC home game in October. Um, what, what are your thoughts on road games, neutral site games? Like, do you, do you enjoy going into somebody else's house versus, you know, being at home? I definitely love road games more than home games. I don't want to upset, you know, our Neyland fans. I love playing in Neyland Stadium, but I feel like, uh, you know, away games, I just feel like all the odds are against you. Uh, gives you a little more, just gives you a little bit more, you know, that feeling that focus. you get. Yeah, you could say focus. Um, I think there's plenty of other words that you can use, but. Uh, going on the road is something I've always loved to do uh, since a young age. So. so how excited are you for Oklahoma then to open conference play? Yeah, I'm excited. Yes, ma'am. I'm excited. After games when you're with your family, do you do y'all talk like a lot about what happened in the game for hours and hours, or do you kind of flush that and move on? Sure, we don't, we don't talk about the game really. Uh, really, I only talk to, about the game with my dad. He'll ask me questions on, you know, stuff I've seen out there on the field and, you know, what he's seeing in the stands. But, uh, Really with my mom and then my kind of, we just kind of keep football out the, out the way and, you know, we're just enjoying each other's time. With so, with, with so many siblings growing up, was it kind of hard to get the attention from the, everybody sort of got something they want to talk about? Yeah, that's probably how my sisters feel because uh, I think my dad focused a lot on the boys growing up. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe it feels that way with, with, with the girls just because they were the younger ones and, you know, my dad kind of focused on them second. But uh, yeah, there's never... I've always felt love from, from both my parents. You talked about always being accommodating when people come and ask you for pictures. Was there someone when you were younger as an athlete or a celebrity that you saw that you remember that made you kind of? Yeah, like um, I'd say the first two were Bryce and DJ. Um, coming out, for me, they're the two top high schoolers, uh, CJ Stroud too. So I'd say when I first seen those three, I kind of like, you know, was shocked and I wanted to get a picture with them. So I, that's when I, when I say I know how it feels for, you know, a couple young kids that, they see someone they look up to. What, where, what, where was that at? Was that at a camp or something? Or? Uh, I first seen CJ Stroud was at a high school. Uh, we were training there. He came out, and uh, that's when I, I think that was probably my eighth grade or ninth grade year. Um, Bryce and DJ was probably uh, 
we had a little all-star game my sixth grade year, and they played in it. They're the older kids, so I, I got them there. And then uh, I think, yeah, DJ was there, and then Bryce was kind of at Bosco versus Modern Day game. So. What age were you when somebody first asked for your autograph or a selfie or something like that? Shoot. I can tell you, man. I don't, I'm not too sure. I want to say probably 16, 17. Oh, I'm not too sure. How yeah. do you think you reacted to that the first few times it happened? I was kind of like, oh damn, you want my, you want my autograph? Uh, it's kind of weird, but yeah, I gave it to him. I didn't, I don't think I even had an autograph then, so I kind of like, it was probably a bad autograph he got for me. Not great. <laughs> not, not yeah, probably not even in cursive. I don't, I don't remember. So but there's a printed Nico autograph. That's probably it. Yeah, yeah. They're probably Nico or some eight or Nico I eight. Have you worked on that then? You've worked yeah, on yeah. yeah. From, from that day on, I had to I had to practice my signature a little bit. Are you an Olympics guy at all? Like, do you watch the beach volleyball? Being a volleyball guy. Shoot, I haven't, I haven't watched beach volleyball. No, I, I feel like I lock in more on the basketball when when Olympics is going on. Can you describe what it's like going against um, Amari Thomas in that defense here? Oh, it's great, man. Um, I'm going against one of the best D linemen or best D lines in the country. You know, Coach Garner does a great job with with that whole D line, and uh, I think it's a great experience for me to, you know, this is the best D lineman I'm gonna face in practice, and uh, it'll just give me a better feel on where to move in certain situations. So. Thomas says that sometimes in the locker room he lets you know that he's gonna get after you that day. What's that uh, dynamic yeah. like? It's great, man. I just, you know, when they say stuff like that, it, it gets my competitive spirit up. So even the DBs, DBs will talk a little bit. Ricky will talk. So um, it definitely just gets my comp competitive spirit going. Are you keeping are score? Oh, yeah. That's, that's the plan. We've got to score. No, yes. are you keeping score? Oh, am I keeping that? score? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I think we go back and forth enough to, to where we, we, we're good on not keeping score. So, yeah. You were talking about trash talk earlier. Who's the best trash talk on the defense? Best trash talk on the defense. On the D line, I probably say nobody really talks to me, but but James, James, James Pierce, he he he's probably the one that most talks to me. And then uh, on the back end, DBs, probably have to say Andre Turntine. Ricky only talks when I talk to him, so if I say something, he'll uh, get him going. Um, yeah, no, uh, we just have some friendly trash talk. Yeah, some friendly trash talk. James, James, back it up. Oh yeah, yeah, he, he backs it up. He backs it up a couple times. Um, it's a great competition. You know, him and Lance will go at it. Him and John will go at it. So I love the competition. Do you and James have much of a relationship connection? You guys are kind of the stars of the team in this program. Yeah, me and James have a great relationship, man. That's my guy, man. Um, James has always welcomed me since I've gotten here. So, yeah, me and, me and James have a great relationship. You, you're field. glad that when the season gets here, he's chasing other guys. In man, the I'm, I'm glad he's on my team for sure. Yes, sir. Talking about CJ and Bryce and those guys, what is it about California quarterbacks lately? Shoot. Uh, I don't know, man. I think I think we produce some of the best quarterbacks, California in general. And uh, yeah, man, it was just cool to have them in my backyard and you know guys I can go watch every Friday night. Why do you think that is? Or why do you think California's had that kind of success? Ah, damn, that's that's a tough one, man. I don't. I think probably just you know the trainers, maybe. Uh, I don't. I don't know, man. I don't, we got so many good quarterbacks coming out of California. I think it's, it's just the Cali thing. How much has Gaston Moore helped you? Great, man. Uh, Gaston has been, you know, a great help for me since I've got here, like I said. Him and Joe, you know, have always pushed me. Um, Gaston helped me get a great grasp of the offense when I first got here, and uh, he's continuously pushed me since since I've been here. So Tennessee's been a little bit of a recruiting heater here lately. How much have you done a little bit of recruiting of these classes that are underneath yours, and kind of what's been your pitch? Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, Recruiting guys, any guys that the coaches send me, you know, I'll keep in contact with them and uh, really just, you know, we can create something special here, man. Uh, you can come be a part of this is really what I've been pitching. So, What's, the biggest, couple more guys. What's the biggest thing you've learned about Coach Hypo in your year and a half, two years here? Coach Hypo is a very chill guy, man. He doesn't say too much. Um, when he when he has to say something, though, he will say it. Um, and, he, you know, he's just been a great help for me, man, a great guy to learn under. Uh, you know, former Heisman, uh, Heisman runner-up and, you know, Natty Champ. So I've just been trying to soak up all the game I care from Coach Hike. Does he show you guys his highlights, his film from back No, he, he doesn't like showing any highlights. I don't know why, but uh, it might be the Oklahoma jersey or, or some, but uh, Coach Hype doesn't really ever ever try to show Have us his highlights. Have you looked him up yourself? I've looked Coach Hype up. Yes, I have looked what, him up. What's your sort of evaluation on him as a quarterback? Uh, he was very accurate. He was a winner. I, I, I tell you, Coach Hype was a winner, so. 
Yeah, that's what I took, man. You talked a little bit about Gas. What about Jay, too, and sort of just the way yeah. he sort of progressed since he got here? Yeah, here. Jay, Jay's been doing great, man. Um, you know, that whole spring helped him out. And, uh, you know, all the extra work he's putting in with the with the coaches on the side, the young guy meetings, I feel like he's in a great spot. And, um, yeah, man, Jay, Jay he, he's getting it going, so. If you have to get after somebody this year, are you comfortable doing that now? Say again? If you have to get after a teammate, say this year, you know, yell at Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, man. Um, I feel like I've created that relationship with my teammates to, you know, hold them to the standard. Um, and, you know, they, they always know it's coming from a place of love and, you know, no hatred towards it. But, uh, yeah, um, just vice versa with my teammates. They can keep me in, count, in, uh, in check and, uh, you know, I won't feel no type of way. So nothing's personal here, man. And, uh, yeah, we're all trying to, you know, exceed one goal. Is this, diff, uh, sesh, is this session a lot different for you this year than when you came in here as a freshman and met with the media? Do you feel a lot different? Yeah, I, mean, I think I've always been comfortable with the media. Uh, got, you know, a lot of home training um, with, with this media stuff. So, yeah, I, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. Felt felt pretty comfortable out here. So. Thanks, Nico. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, guys. Just Appreciate y'all. We had a 